This is video number 34 on your Firearms Defense channel. This video is going to be a little longer. This video is going to be about, for want of a better term, it's going to be about having to kill people in self-defense and what you might go through doing that or be expected to go through or whatever. Now, when you take two-day or four-day handgun at any of the shooting academies or when the police talk to you about shooting someone in self-defense at these uh, block uh, seminars they give or whatever, people will tell you that it's not good to have to kill somebody in self-defense. They tell you how this can have a profound effect on your life and uh, totally cause psychological devastation and stuff like this and uh, cause you all kinds of problems and uh, they tell you what a potential problem this could be. Now, granted, it could possibly become a problem like that. You know, there's no denying that possibility. And now, my own personal feeling regarding this, now I haven't had any uh, experience along this line myself. I'm, as I stated before, I'm an armchair warrior. I'm a Rambo wannabe. I was 4F. I was never in the service. I, uh, I never went through Marine Corps boot camp or any of that sort of stuff, you know. So I don't have any experience in, along these lines. Now, a lot of people have the mistaken idea that in order to kill somebody and not experience this psychological devastation, you've got to be somebody like Dirty Harry or Rambo or you have to have gone through Marine basic training or gone through Ranger school and experienced combat and stuff like this. And uh, they think in order to survive something like uh, killing someone who breaks into your home, you should be experienced and have to go through these things. Now, that's not true. There's a way you can acquire the mindset needed to defend your life successfully and take somebody else's life and not experience any of these things. It's called uh, uh, visualization, for want of a better term. And Nightingale, Conant, and all the success gurus teach us constantly. But what you do, you just imagine a scenario where say somebody breaks in your home and you imagine a scenario where they tie you and your wife and your two kids up and they take everything they want and then they kill you anyway. Because this is probably what's going to happen if you don't defend yourself. So you just imagine that what these people are like who are going to do these things to you, they're not worried about any of these things. They do what they want to do and that's the end of it. So they don't have any conscience towards you whatsoever. Now, imagine yourself successfully defending yourself against something like this. These people break into your home, uh, you and your wife uh, shoot at them, uh, you know, get them both killed, you know, and that's the end of that. That takes care of that. Now, the next thing you imagine is what range of emotions you would feel from killing these people. Now, I've already decided what my range of emotions would be. I would just absolutely refuse to go through anything like psychological devastation. Oh my God, I had to kill these people. I hope God will forgive me. I don't want to go to hell, you know. Uh, I go see my uh, priest and confess, you know, and just go through a whole lot of stuff and go see a psychiatrist and get medications or. I just flat refuse to do any of that. I wouldn't do it. Here's the way it would be for me. For me, having to kill somebody who broke into my home at 3 a.m. in the morning, despite my ADT security signs that I have out there warning them that I have security, somebody breaks into my home at 3 a.m., I'm going to kill them. I'm not going to worry about it. For me, what I'm going to feel for me, it's going to be just like getting up in the morning. I perform my morning bathroom functions. I, I do it out of necessity. I don't enjoy doing them, but they have to be done. I do them. If I go in the kitchen, I see cockroaches scurrying around or mice scurrying around. I 
have to exterminate them. I don't enjoy exterminating them, but it has to be done, and I do it, and I don't uh, get all upset by it or anything. So for me, that's what killing one of these people in a self-defense situation would be like, and it just, all it comes from is acquiring the mindset and working on the mindset. As I say, I'm not Dirty Harry, I'm not Rambo, I haven't been in the service, I was 4F, I wasn't in the Marine Corps, I didn't survive ranger training where the drill instructor hands you a knife and tells you you get lost in the jungle for two weeks, eat bugs, uh, snakes, whatever you can find. You come back after two weeks, you're 20 pounds lighter. I didn't survive that type of thing, but it's all its all just mindset. It depends on the, what mindset you want to acquire as to how you react to these things. Now there's one other possibility I want to cover here before I forget about it, and I do have time to cover this. Now, okay, that's the mindset I'm going to work with to start with. Now, what if, God forbid, somebody broke into my house and I shot them, and God forbid, what if I actually enjoyed killing them? What if it was just a big rush? Uh, doesn't this make me some kind of sadist? Doesn't this make me a sick person? Uh, isn't this just terrible? Well, you know, if I feel that way, I feel that way, you know. It's, uh, it's fine. I didn't break any laws. I didn't do anything. I've been a decent, God-fearing, law-abiding, useful, useful, productive citizen for 63 years. You know, I killed this guy who broke into my house at 3 a.m. in the morning. I enjoyed it. That doesn't make me a bad person. I just go well, deal with it, move on, get over it. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a problem. So anyway, that concludes video 34 here. It's been seven minutes. It's been relatively short. So I'm going to close this one out and I'm going to move on to video 35.